Welcome back. Forgive the background noise if it picks up. They're digging the roads up out there, but uh, don't worry, they'll never find the bodies. Uh, I've tested it, you should be able to just about hear it, but not too badly. If it ruins your enjoyment, don't worry, I'll do that as well. So, the question that we're going to be answering today is, if you have this 15-disc behemoth from 2012 for Lark's Tongues and Aspic, which is the complete sessions, um, with three DVDs and a Blu-ray disc and an 86-page booklet and posters and flyers and tickets and photos and a little piece of Fripp Soul. Do you need the new edition, which is this? Much smaller, bigger than the uh, 50th, uh, 30th anniversary uh, CD DVD sets, but it's, uh, you know, reasonably compact. Do you need this? This is two CDs. Two Blu-rays, right? Yes and no, right? So, first of all, thank you to Burn and Shed for this. I'm going to answer this in a couple of ways. Do you need this? No, if you're not a completist, all right? Or someone who particularly real loves Lark's Tongues, which, come on. If you're a Crimson, if you're a Crimson fan, you're probably going to love Lark's Tongues. This is absolutely world class. But what this does is gives you a little bit more of the story using 2023 technology to do so as well. Right? And also further archive work from the team, from DGM, from David Singleton, from Stephen Wilson. Right? So what you essentially get here is 2023 stereo mixes that are completely new to this. They're not on this at all, this big behemoth. You get these instrumental mixes, which are reasonably self-explanatory. I'm pretty sure you know what that means. So it's uh, instrumental mixes of, of what you know. CD2 is where things start to get interesting. Probably the, the most interesting thing in the set. Well, apart from one of the blurries, but we'll come to that. Um, elemental mixes. Right? So elemental mixes will come to as well. There's always a bit to come to, isn't there? But don't worry, it's not going to be a long one. And then selected master reels. Right, so that's your CD content. Blu-ray Disc 1 has the, the this album, 2023 version, in Dolby Atmos, right? Dolby Atmos, we'll just come to now. People think, some people, it's a gimmick. You know, believe the hate, folks. If you have something that plays Dolby Atmos, oh, bleh. You know the thing about 5.1, it's, it's like it's, it's uh, you, you're uh, being surrounded. But no, this is more like you're actually sitting in the studio. Right? And everything's happening everywhere all at once. Like the movie. Um, so yeah, Dolby Atmos, with a good engineer behind it, is a brilliant, brilliant thing. This is. And it uses Stephen Wilson stuff. Stephen Wilson comes back to work on this, by the way. Along with David Singleton. 5.1 Surround Sounds, which, again, Wilson. 2023 mixes, elemental mixes in 2496 LPCM stereo, so as high res as you get basically. And then Blu ray disc 2, complete mixes of the original recording sessions. So you get this, basically. You get this. You get the 30th anniversary edition, the Stephen Wilson remix from then. You get the original flat album transfer, and you get the session reels. And again, all in Blu-ray quality, so it's 2496 PCM stereo. Essentially, this is a more compact version of this. If you're someone who's happy enough to listen on your Blu-ray player, it's got all of this, basically, apart from apart from um, live things, of course, right? So it's not got the uh, old Green's Playhouse from Glasgow, which, is, which then became the Apollo, which is now Cineworld. What a downgrade. Um, so you don't get, you know, the Portsmouth, Guildhall, the whole technical college, but you do get um, the session reels, the 73 stereo mix, the 30th anniversary, the alternate takes and mixes. That's all in here, right? So if, you, if you're someone who's not 100% bothered about live versions, this, this takes that, puts it in here, tarts it up again, and then gives you a lot more besides, because the instrumental versions are not on this. 
they're new to this. The 2023 stereo mixes, well, it's 2023, so they're new to this as well. Those have been redone, right? But the Stephen Wilson um, remixes that you get here aren't just the same ones that you got there. Again, he's come in and redone them. So you get his original work, but you get the ones using the stuff that's been found in the last 11 years as well. So you get to hear more advanced technology with more of the stuff that's been found in the Crimson Vaults. And the elemental mixes, I said to come back to, there's a bit of confusion as to what that means. David Singleton explains it thus in the booklet. Um, the elemental mixes are essentially taking each constituent part, so just the bass part. So say it's uh, j just John Wetton's bass parts from this, or say it's just some David Cross violin or, or new, uh, Bill Bruford's drums, right? In fact, there's a better example. Bill Bruford reading the newspaper out loud, right? That was something that they recorded the thing, can we can put it in the mix somewhere. Well, now these elemental mixes come up with an all-new mix of the album where you can hear things coming to the fore that were either buried in a mix before or have never been in the mix. They've only ever been heard in the studio in the early 70s and never since. So essentially, it gives you a new version of Lark's Tongues and Aspic as well. So you get all the versions, you get a brand new version, and you get this elemental mix, which he describes as essentially being at the monitor, being at the desk, listening to the recording individual parts. So, having listened to it a couple of times, I will say it's not a 100% satisfying listen, but it's not supposed to be. It's for the purest, it's for the completest. So if you're a casual Crimson fan, don't get this. Uh, sorry, Burning Shed. But get the thir go to Burning Shed and get the 30th anniversary edition instead because that's the one you want. Right? If you're if you're someone who just wants the album, right? Um, or you could get it for the album too because it's on the Blu-ray. But essentially, the meat and potatoes here is for the completist who wants to hear, uh, wants to see how, how the right into the weeds basically, right? They they want to know how the the tapestry was made stitch by stitch. They're not interested in the bigger picture because they've they've got it for goodness sake, so they don't need that over and over. But this gives them new insight into how this came to be in the first place. So it's essential for that. I'll give you a look at, at what you get inside the package. So a little bit like uh, the um, debut album. It's um, a hardback box and then you get sleeves within it so you get of course one that resembles the album cover all right so we're used to this so this um this replicates it faithfully with the, the gatefold and the reverse right and this gives you some session tape stuff right which is not in the booklet i double checked this is not the kind of stuff you saw in the booklet although this photo i believe was in the booklet uh, the sleeves themselves, nothing to write home about. They are just um, protectors, so there's no artwork on the sleeves. You do get brand new writing um, from Sid Smith, the biographer of Crimson, in the 36-page booklet. And again, he breaks down a lot of a lot of why this is essential, um, as opposed to being just a cut-down version of the box set. And you get your full full trial lessons as well. Um, and obviously you get newspaper clippings and, and the likes from there. Um, but and there's the contents of CD2. Um, which I think is the most interesting thing in the set, that elemental um, production. Loads and loads of photos, as you'd expect. So the Blu-ray disc itself, disc 1, 2023 20, mixes in 1, 2, 3 versions. The elemental mixes and the instrumental mixes. Right, so... Pretty solid stuff. And then oh, Blu-ray Disc 2 is just absolutely stacked. Right. I'll go through it briefly. Original mixes in, as I said, Stereo 2496 of the whole album. 30th Anniversary Remaster as well. The session reels. The complete recording sessions in order for the first time as well. So January the 16th. Takes 1 to 10 of Larks 1, takes 12 to 18 and 20 to 22, take 1 of Larks 2, Book of Saturday, take 1, 
blah blah blah. January the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st. They took the 22nd off. Um, and goes right through, goes right through. It is absolutely unreal. And it doesn't stop there, it goes right up to February. So it is all the session work, all the session work that went into the record. So on February the 1st, they finished up with Book of Saturday takes 1 to 3 and 5 to 10. Book of Saturday uh, Master Reel bass passes 1 with just guitar and violin. And then overdubs for vocals, guitar and violin overdubs. And then uh, vocal overdubs further to that once they'd listened back. And Sid goes through it in the essay as to how this is, what the point of this is, why it's essential, why it's perhaps not essential for some people. But yeah, I think you know probably from the first minute of this video whether or not this is intended for you or not. If you're a massive Crimson fan, then yes, this is absolutely for you. If you're a casual Crimson fan, you wouldn't even want that big box set. Just stick with the, the one CD, one DVD uh, sets that came out for the 30th anniversary. They are great, they are wonderful, Stephen, remixes, Stephen Wilson's remixes are fantastic, but these new ones expand it further. Dolby Atmos just expands everything further. It doesn't feel like you're listening in your room and everything surrounding you in your room. It's as close to being immersive and in the studio as you can possibly get. And these elemental mixes, which again, I think is the best thing on this set, you get to hear parts that you've never heard before arranged in a totally new way. It's like an alternate version of the album comprised of odds and ends and strange things, even for Crimson standards, that you would never imagine. You would never have put in the original mix yourself. It's a little bit discombobulating in a strange way to hear a different version like that, but hey. So yeah, is this essential? I think I've answered it three or four times. No, but if you're a Crimson fan, if you're a Crimson diehard, absolutely. For the price, I think this is I think this is about thirty nine ninety nine. For all the complete sessions of, of Lark's Tongues, all these new mixes and the ones that have existed before. Come on. Lark's Tongues and Aspie. Folks, thanks very much. See you soon.